pastor has been talking about the seed and I'm also going to talk about the seed today. So can we open our Bibles to Matthew 13, 3 through 8? And I'd like it in the Message Bible, please, on, on the screen. Matthew 13, 3 to 8. I'm a little favorable towards the Message Bible because uh, somehow stands out very differently. Okay. Um, Matthew 13, 3 through 8. Okay. This records an incident when Jesus was here and he talked about a parable of the sower. Please go on. Yeah. A crowd gathered. Uh, Jesus was standing up in a boat. He used this as a pulpit. Go on, please. So um, this talks about a seed. The seed was scattered. It fell on some road. Then uh, it fell on gravel. Then it um, fell. Go on, please. It fell among weeds and some fell on good earth. I would like us to pay attention to the last bit. Some fell on good earth and produced a harvest beyond his wildest dreams. That is quite exciting to have a harvest beyond our wildest dreams. Can we go to the next one? Luke 8, 4 to 8. It's the same thing. All right. I'm just concentrating on the word that describes the harvest there. If we can pay attention to the harvest. 4 to 8, go right down. It's the same thing. Again, there is a road, there is weeds, there's gravel. And next, they fell on rich soil. Other seed, all right, please note it is seed, fell on rich earth and produced a bumper crop. A bumper crop happens when there's such an abundance that these containers cannot hold them. All right. A harvest beyond imagination, a bumper crop. This is what I want to concentrate on. How do we get there? Any of you interested in this? Yes. We all want to know how to get it. Yes. And I'm really excited to tell you how to get it. It is yours. And the best part is you already have it, right? That is the most exciting thing. We already have it, but how do I manifest it? And it is always, always a joy to bring that message to you. The factors needed for us, all right? So I'm opening up the secret to you. It's very simple. There are two factors needed there. One is the soil itself. And the next thing is the seed. These are the two main factors that we are going to look into. So when you look at the soil, here it constantly talks about soil which was not good, soil which was not good, soil which was not good. And we keep hearing the sermon and again and again saying, you have to be good soil, right? Don't be the soil where the seed will dry up and die, where something will happen and the seed does not grow at all. I would like to tell you today that you are already good soil. So the first thing is, that I am already good soil. How do I know this? Open to Ezekiel 36, 26 to 27. Ezekiel 36, 26 to 27. It's a very beautiful verse which says, this is talking about you and I. Where through the prophet, it is prophesied about you and I, which says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. When he talks about the parable, he's talking about stone, bad soil, soil that is not receiving, not able to produce. But you and I have already been given a new soil. Where is it to prove? Ezekiel. Anybody wants to believe anything contrary to this? No. So can you put your hands up and say, I am good soil. So now you're ready for the harvest. What harvest do you want? Bumper harvest. All right. Well, yeah, beyond your wildest imaginations. Yes. So here you go. The matter of the soil is dealt with. So you and I don't have to worry about sermons when we say, oh gosh, I need to prepare my soul. I need to become better. I need to, you know, be receiving. No, don't worry about all of that. He himself has said, I have now 
set right the matter of the soil you have great soil your heart is new don't worry about the condition of the soil it has been set right next we come to the seed what is the seed luke 8 11 it says this seed is the word of god all right seed is what word of god we always wonder even last week when pastor prince started preaching he said well, as soon as you hear the word seed we're talking about something we need to give but i am telling you here what you are what you already have what you already have is the seed that jesus wants you to know about that the holy spirit wants to speak to you about because we are tired of hearing about what you need to do what you need to do and it's a never ending thing right if you do this then you need to do something more if you've done there then you need to go somewhere else it's like snake and ladder right you keep going keep going and suddenly you feel like something's hit you and you come back again to square one so, oh i again need to start from scratch but with jesus he's saying you don't need to do anything at all i have finished everything for you i'm just here to tell you what you already have and so he is saying here the seed is the word of god john 1 1 what does it say now what is the word of god what is the word of god john 1 1 jesus who knows that verse by heart i always tell you i'm the teacher here huh and the word was god don't so i hear some people going pus, 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 pus. yeah that's it <laughs> you heard me right <laughs> In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. This talks about Jesus. So the seed is Jesus. It's not anything you and I need to do, but it's about who is inside of us. And therefore, you are eligible to have a bumper crop. Amen. Jesus is the word. Galatians 3:16. I would encourage all of you from Life and Grace Ministries to read Galatians 3, the whole chapter this week when you are home. All right? It is the most powerful chapter that points towards grace and draws you away from law. In fact, it calls the law a curse, calls it a lot of things which is pretty scary. And we go like, how come we've never seen this? it is a foundation for the new covenant galatians 3 and i'm pointing to galatians 3:16 the promises were spoken to abraham and his seed over here it says your seed one person and i would like to turn your attention to abraham and the promise the seed was spoken about right from the beginning where where is the first seed mentioned in genesis it talks about Jesus as the seed. All right? And it goes on the seed is looking to latch on to somebody on this earth. All right? And he found Abraham. In Genesis 15:4 in the message bible it says in Genesis 15:4 the message of God. Who's that? God's message. When we say God's message, who is that pointing to? Jesus came to Abraham. We're always thinking there is a promise that came to Abraham. You're going to have a son. You're going to have a son. There was a twofold thing that happened there. There was a seed. There was Jesus that came to Abraham in the spirit realm. And then there was a work that happened in the physical realm where he birthed Isaac. But Jesus also entered there. And that's why we say we, Jesus came through the genealogy of Abraham. He received Christ in his spirit. Isn't that amazing? And yet we've only been thinking of Isaac is born. Isaac is born. Christ was born there. And you know how that is pointed out? It says, the next verse, he believed and it was credited to him as, as what? The first time the word righteousness is used in the Bible is here. Righteousness means 
right standing with God. Abraham received Christ in his spirit, the promise of Christ for the future in his spirit. And you know what happened? Righteousness happened. He stood in a right standing with God. Did any of us ever see this before? We only saw Isaac. But here is Abraham. He believed God's word. He believed it and therefore it was called faith. He said, yes, I believe that things are going to change for me. I receive the seed and that was Jesus. He received it in his spirit and righteousness showed up there. Was Abraham called righteous there? Yes. Every time the seed falls, we are positioned in a right standing with God. Are you righteous? Are you righteous? Then you are eligible for the bumper crop. Amen. Because where the seed shows up, their righteousness shows up. And did you do anything for this? Did Abraham do anything? Well, Sarah did try and it turned out into a big, big mess. But did Abraham do anything? The poor man just followed along. But he carried the seed in his spirit. And every time he carried that seed in his spirit, it opened up righteousness. He stood with a right standing before God that he was able to intercede for people. He was able to dwell in the lavish of lavish prosperity. He was able to be above all people, was he not? The Bible talks about Abraham and even in faith, it was Abraham who was a great man. You know why? Because he received Christ in the spirit realm. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, Righteousness came through Christ Jesus. Right? So how did Abraham get righteousness there? He received the seed that was Jesus Christ in his spirit. Have you all received Jesus in your spirit? Yes. Therefore, bumper crop. Amen. Christ lives in us through the new covenant. Abraham only received him. But for us, Christ is already living inside of us. Can you imagine that? Aren't we greater than Abraham then? Amen. He only received, he only believed and said, yeah, I believe it. But for you and I, we said believe. And he says, for those who have believed with their heart and confessed with their mouth, what happens? They have been made righteous. Salvation has come and Christ comes and dwells inside of you. Isn't that so powerful? That every day I am walking with the ability and the power to harvest a bumper crop. And when I think about this, I am reminded of another man who carried this, the seed in the spirit. When God's message came to Abraham, he also gave him a lot of prophecies. He said, you know what? Your people are going to be enslaved for 400 years. And after that, I'm going to deliver them and I'm going to take them into the promised land. Did that happen? Yes, it happened. And when that happened, the children of Israel were so receptive of God's word. And they said, yes, we believe. Did it happen? No, no, it didn't happen. They were absolute grumblers, starting from Moses also, right? No, no, I cannot do it. You please send somebody else. No, no, I cannot do it. Please. If you ever see any kind of unbelief in the Bible, it has to be this entire thing. Starting with Pharaoh, unbelief. Starting with Moses, unbelief. I don't know, Aaron, poor man, was stuck between all of this. Somewhere he had some kind of trust and belief. Sometimes even he failed, right? Because the people were constant grumblers. A bunch of grumblers. That is the kind of environment we find ourselves in today. Especially in my profession. Constantly grumbling something or the other and I'm thinking, my goodness, you have so many things in life, but no, 
crumble 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 i don't have this that is how the world lives around us because they're constantly worried concerned crumbling they cannot think of anything good for themselves right nothing good is going to happen they expect the worst i better expect the worst and something good will happen out of it have we heard people say that i cannot dare ex- expect the best because then i'm going to be deeply disappointed but that is not how people who carry the seed behave because people that carry the seed are called for bumper crop so we cannot behave as people that are losers grumblers constantly grumbling but we are faith people romans 10:17 says faith comes by hearing hearing the message of christ even that work also jesus himself is doing is there anything you need to do anything you need to do there is one little thing i'll tell you towards the end okay <laughs> everything else he is doing even faith he is giving you he's saying just jesus everything is jesus and still sometimes we feel like i cannot do this i cannot do this there's nothing you are doing boss there's nothing you are called to do everything he is doing and so among all of these grumblers were two people that stood out because the seed found a place for them in their hearts who are those two people Joshua and Caleb Joshua and Caleb received the seed in their spirit the seed that was spoken to and deposited where in Abraham they were the two people i my attention is prophetically drawn to Caleb this morning i'll tell you the characteristic about Caleb Caleb never grew old what what do you mean by never grew old not in numbers in his strength in his ability to do things some of us are sitting here and thinking i have crossed my age my time is done don't we feel that way i got married everything is finished yeah i've had kids everything is finished and i'd be bold enough to say oh my fa- marriage fell through i can't do another marriage yeah I, i just can't do this right i can't do i can't think of a second chance because it, i don't think it's going to happen don't we feel that way because time has passed but caleb stands as a testimony to say god is beyond your age so if there is anything you're thinking that i have crossed that age I've crossed the time has passed by let me tell you about Caleb Caleb and Caleb was 40 years old when they went to spy the land he came back with good report really excited and he said man this is perfect they have great grapes they there is this is a land flowing with milk and honey come on we need to go and capture it and then you have the rest of them who said nonsense grumblers the worst is going to happen there are giants they're going to kill us because they never thought about god it was always about themselves this is where the harvest we are not able to see because we make it about ourselves please read galatians 3 today when you go back home the entire chapter it will tell you how no more is it about you what you have done or what you haven't done also it's no more about you it's about the seed and he himself is the harvest in your life there's nothing you need to do and so caleb had to walk for another 40 years with these grumblers going round and round that same wilderness they were going round and round right they were not going in any direction because for 40 years if they had to stay in that same wilderness and not get out of it the only way that happened was they were going round and round and he was among the worst people these guys would grumble about garlics these guys would grumble about fish suddenly they will grumble about the water suddenly they'll want to kill who moses suddenly they'll want to build their own idol a new god they've come up with 
most creative people they'd come up with the worst things but there was Caleb walking as a single man carrying the seed in his spirit the bible says he had a very different spirit because the seed was in him the seed which was in abraham spoken to abraham he carried it forward and he said i do not care what is in front of me among so many people and look at us we also feel that way sometimes because the world around us makes us feel like we cannot achieve it our time has gone by because we are looking at our circumstances we are looking at what is happening around us we are looking at or we are listening to report oh this water is bitter we cannot drink it oh there are snakes in the camp we are getting killed my brother got killed you are going to get killed also right everything but caleb said boss my mind is not set on this wilderness my mind is set on the promised land the seed has said promised land a land flowing with milk and honey where we have not dug these wells but we will go and drink of it where we have not planted these plants but we are going to eat the fruit of it that is the kind of harvest you and i are called into where we have not done anything but the seed itself enables you to experience to enjoy a bumper crop and that is caleb for you at 80 after 40 years at 80 anybody 80 years old here anybody at 80 he went and started fighting wars like a young man you know why because of promise and god said none of you are going to enter the promised land you know who's going to go in joshua and caleb among 30 lakhs of people they grumbled because the seed they could not receive the seed they only saw what was happening around them they only saw what was happening around them do you find yourself in that situation today when you look at your illness and you say i don't think i'm going to make it next year i don't know if i'm going to be alive i don't think i'm going to make this i don't think my finances are growing i don't think anything is working out for me my time is up no your promised land awaits you you are going to live and see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living does it does it say dead so for that you need to be kingdom minded you need to be what minded kingdom minded not wilderness minded in the wilderness there is grumbling but he was kingdom minded and he was looking forward in faith what was he operating in in faith the word of god says about caleb itself okay he believed numbers 14 it says he had a different spirit and therefore he followed wholeheartedly to follow somebody you need to have faith in them okay and you need to believe in them are you a believer today are you a believer put your hands up and say i am a believer if you are a believer the promised land is waiting for you and the lord says none of these grumblers are entering but you are entering the promised land put your hands on your head and say i have the promised land whatever it is the promised land for you whatever you are waiting to see it could be a breakthrough in your health it could be a breakthrough in your finances it could be a breakthrough in your workplace it could be a breakthrough in your personal life you will see it you will enter it you will experience it this is the promise of god for you because you are carrying the seed and what is the seed he is the seed jesus is the seed can anything destroy the seed can anything destroy the seed inside of you it cannot caleb 
though he was going round and round in circles in the wilderness he was following the promise he was following the promise by faith and he said i am going to enter the promised land and did he yes he did he lived by faith he was a believer today we all call ourselves believer what christian you are i'm a believer christian no have you heard that term <laughs> i am a believer christian a believer christian means i walk by faith and not by sight not by what i hear not by what i see not by what people are speaking about me but i walk by faith and therefore i am a believer matthew 9:23 now this is where it comes to what you need to do it's very very tough thing all of you ready to do it yeah it's the most difficult thing i'll tell you mark 9:23 Mark 9:23 it says for all things are possible if you if you Abraham believed and it was credited to him as righteousness who was a believer i just spoke about Caleb believed and he was termed to have a very different spirit you know what you and i are called to do not even faith even faith jesus himself puts inside of you even that you don't need to struggle with because the father who had a son who was tormented by an evil spirit said jesus help me in my unbelief even for that you can go to jesus and he's saying my seed is there faith also is taken care of the only thing you and i need to exercise is i believe that's how salvation comes to us So every day the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. You only need to believe and you will see it happen. But that is the most difficult thing, no? You tell me to run around this church first thing in the morning 9 o'clock everybody come. If you while the worship is setting up, if you come here and do a circle of 10 rounds singing, you know, I believe I believe, you will have a breakthrough this week. If I say that I'm telling you our church will be full. Because people are doers. Galatians 3 says your law people are under a curse and they are always about doing. This believing is the difficult part. Because we are wired at the fall to become doers. But we were created as faith beings. So today whatever you are struggling with believing right let me tell you let me assure you that everything is possible the person you have trusted in is worthy he is able to do exceedingly abundantly much more than you can ask or imagine what a powerful verse ephesians 3:20 to 21 exceedingly abundantly that is a kind of harvest when you believe you will receive it This morning if you're struggling with believing in something because of the way things are going contrary fix your eyes on Jesus there is nothing you need to do the seed will produce its harvest your only job is to believe and you will walk in the promised land just as Abraham saw in his spiritual eyes he saw Jesus on the cross of Calvary. He saw the finished work of Jesus. Caleb saw and received the promised land by faith because he believed the seed that was deposited in him. How can I believe? Even for this I will give you something. We never leave you helpless. So you cannot say I nobody taught me how to believe. They said believe believe we don't know how to do it now. Today is the day of Pentecost. Do you know that? Yes, the Pentecostal churches will be in one euphoria. <laughs> fast music, fast drums, they'll all be jumping. But they have no idea about the Holy Spirit. 
and the other churches who don't know anything about the holy spirit will have something or the other about him which they they don't understand and the the holy spirit cannot work in their lives also the holy spirit came so that you and i can walk in the finished work of jesus he didn't ever leave us helpless christ finished everything for us he is the seed inside of us and he himself will harvest a bumper crop in you okay and how do i walk when i have unbelief acts 1 when jesus was going to be taken up he said wait i'm going to send you the holy spirit and he will help you walk in power who is the one that gives you the power to believe the holy spirit do you and i have the holy spirit today yes but it's a constant struggle between the holy spirit and my spirit because my spirit wants to hear everything that is happening here this is not going to work out for you susan it's been a very challenging week for me um many of the people that are very close to me here know about it and i was like how am i going to do this sermon i just don't know how i'm going to do this sermon but you know what where there is a seed there is a fruit right where there is a seed there is a fruit do you have the fruit what is the fruit yeah, exactly and who enables you to experience or manifest the fruit of the spirit the holy spirit because it's his see even that he does for you do you have any excuse now to live without hope and live like hopeless like the people in the wilderness going round and round in circles you don't so this week when i was pastor prince and i were going somewhere and he said to me you know what it's very strange i feel a certain calm i said prince that's called the peace of god he said really <laughs> no he said but it's a little beyond that then i see that's the peace of god that transcends all understanding oh is that that he said to me see we it baffles us also right how am i staying so calm I've been so calm that people have gone around saying she's gone mad. Yeah. That's a kind of peace. And where is that? Because you have the seed, it automatically produces and it will be in bumper crop for you. Peace of God. That's what happened to Pastor Prince. Bumper crop of peace he was experiencing. And he's like, "I don't understand this peace. I should be disturbed, no? Why am I literally I had to tell him, "Relax. That is called peace of God." <laughs> you yourself will surpri- be surprised by the joy that fills you how when i'm going through such terrible things am i experiencing this joy because the seed is inside of you and it is producing the fruit what else silver and gold we don't have but what is inside of you we will give you what is it healing life you have the life giving seed inside of you you have no excuse to live like the grumbling people like the people you see around you like the people that are around you don't listen to them you are carrying the seed and you are eligible for a bumper crop the holy spirit is in this place if there is any unbelief you are struggling with because of the circumstances in your life will you just ask him to fill you with the power today is the day of pentecost and jesus said wait for my spirit because when he comes he will fill you with power you will not be the same again as you step out of this place whatever unbelief you carried here today leave it right here as you step out get ready for the bumper crop beyond imagination abundantly exceedingly beyond my imagination.